Cannon River region and welcome to St. James Together Apart, our attempt to be together from at least six feet apart. And today is Wednesday, and so that means we are diving into what it means to be a Christian when we can't be together. And every Wednesday, we're going to hear from a new perspective on how we can react to what's going on in the world around us as Christians. How can we react to this with a Christian response? And today, we are so grateful to have Dr. Winfield Bevins with us. He is the Director of Church Planning from Asbury Theological Seminary, an expert in family discipleship. And so let's listen to on his chat with Ross. Well, good morning, St. James, and welcome to our uh, Wednesday uh, interview where we hear from voices outside of our church uh, with how we can be Christians and the church within this time of coronavirus. Today, I am honored to be joined by my mentor, Winfield Bevins, who's the director of church planting at Asbury Seminary. I'm just so excited to have him here to share with us this morning. So welcome, Winfield, to St. James Together Apart. We're so glad to have you. Hey, it's great to uh, be here with you, Ross. Yeah. So would you mind just starting off telling us a little bit about like, you know, your title is director of church planning at Asbury Theological Seminary, but beyond that, you have so many other uh, talents and passions. So can you just share a little bit about that and what drives you in your walk and, and in your ministry? Yeah, I kind of uh, think of myself in terms of an author um, and an artist and I'm a, I'm a husband and a father you know, as well. Those, those are things that I kind of see as my vocation. I train people to, you know, do discipleship and to plant churches, um, but just really encouraging people also to just kind of live into the ordinary spaces of life and be missionaries where they are, you know, and equip them to just kind of live out their faith in, in deep ways um, through also just a passion to help people recover spiritual practices um, to where it's not just the superficial Christianity, but encouraging people to really think deeply and to follow Christ and, and, and kind of more deeper way, uh, especially in light of, you know, the current context where we find ourselves. Yeah. So would you mind speaking a little bit about that, uh, the deep reflection? Because I think a lot of people right now are feeling a lot of uncertainty and a lot of a lot of fear potentially. Um, and would you mind just sharing like in, how can we go from feeling that fear and not necessarily denying the anxiety that comes, but reflecting on it and responding in a way that doesn't allow that fear to rule us? Yeah, I think that. Um... Yeah, that's a good question. And I think one of the problems in Christianity in North America is we're really shallow. And I think mm. for the last few decades, you know, we've, you know, become really a pragmatic church that we just want to give people cheap two or three, you know, ways to live your best life now. And, you know, um, and, but when we look at the scriptures, the scriptures really, you know, the book of Psalms, for instance, um, there's a depth, there's a profound contemplation on, um, you know, the troubles and there's lament, there's psalms of lament and complaint, and there's psalms of suffering and pain. And, and I think God wants us to live into those places. And I think we've taught people to be pragmatic rather than reflective. Mm. And to be responsive, rather, we've taught people to just respond in these ways. Rather, I think God in this moment wants us to reflect deeply on who we are, what's happening in the world around us, and to embrace our pain and to, rather than to um, hide it, rather to go through it. And I mm. think that's what Jesus did. We're coming out of Lent. We're in Easter. But what we see is that Easter um, came after Jesus went to the cross. And I think we got to embrace this moment. God, you know, what, what were the causes of this? Who knows, providentially. But I do know this, that God in ev each moment, in each situation is wanting to work into our lives. And God's wanting to use this as a moment to do something in us. So I, I just encourage people to, to use this as, as a reflective cultural moment. Um, to go deeper with God. So for, for you personally, how, how do you help get yourself in a space that slows you down enough to sit with this and to reflect? Yeah, I recently wrote a little piece that's online called Embracing Solitude in a Season of Self-Quarantine. Mm -hmm. And again, I think 
maybe this is a gift from God to cause us to slow down and to stop trying to um, do new things and rather embrace God in the moment. And uh, so embrace solitude, um, embrace silence, um, set time aside to actually, rather than see this as a curse, maybe it's a gift that God's trying to give back to believers. And maybe it's a season. I know that's a very difficult season for all of us. Some of us have lost our jobs. It's a season of uncertainty. Um, but my encouragement is just find God in these moments. Um, it's not going to last forever. Um, it feels like it, and it's mm. not going to be over with overnight either. Um, but this too will pass. And so for me personally, in answer to your question, you know, I'm just reflecting on scriptures in deep ways, living into the book of Psalms. You know, I take things like the Lord's Prayer. As I, I, I tell people, it's kind of like a little portable sanctuary that we could take with us wherever you are. You know, the Psalm 23, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. Man, hey, we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And but the Bible says we, we don't you, we don't have to fear any evil because he is our shepherd. and He's leading us and guiding us. And so I, I think just taking hope in the scriptures, taking time to really reflect deeply. Um, I, you know, I encourage people, I'm an artist. I've done a lot of painting and writing over this last few weeks. And, you know, maybe you're not an artist, but, you know, I love, I love the quote, of, I think it's Dostoevsky who said, beauty will save the world. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a season also to just reflect on nature. Spring is springing around us. Flowers are coming up. Reflect on the beauty of creation. Um, look up artwork online. Um, you know, take time to read, to journal. Do, do reflective exercises, slow down and kind of embrace this as a season as, as a gift. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that because I think, you know, the, the common thread that we're seeing right now is we're, we're consistently either confronted with death or people are constantly suspicious of one another and other people's motives. And we're just kind of being uh, defensive and almost survivalistic. And I think, finding that beauty and seeing beauty, whether it's in nature or in artwork or in writing or um, even just in, in soaking up the moments with our families, I think that is something that can carry us through. And so thank you so much for sharing. We really appreciate you joining us this morning. St. James, we hope that this conversation has been one um, that will be an encouragement to you. Maybe, uh, um, maybe push you in a direction that you may not have uh, tried already. And maybe that direction is slowing down and just soaking in the beauty that's around us, even in the midst of something that's so chaotic. So Winfield, thank you so much for joining this, us this morning. And St. James, thank you for watching this. And uh, we pray that God will use this moment as a way for you to draw closer to him. You know, beauty is such a powerful element, and in the pace of life and the gloomy messages we hear all around us, it can be hard to see beauty in anything, especially right now. And so it's so important in a time like this for us to seek out beauty wherever we can find it, and we can find it simply by walking outside. We can find it by having conversations with loved ones, even if it's over Zoom or the telephone. But it's important for us to understand that we are still called to be people of gratitude, that we need to have an attitude of gratitude. We build that up by being thankful for all the things in our lives, especially the little small things that we often overlook, the things that we can still be grateful for, even in a time like this. Well, next up, I want us to look at our church's COVID response. And there's so many different things that we're doing here as the body of St. James. But one of the things that you've perhaps heard about is we partner with Pike Road Schools to deliver meals to children in Pike Road Village, which is a trailer park off of Troy Highway. And every single Wednesday, we are delivering meals to around 150 kids. Now, every time they come, they get a full, every kid gets a full gallon of milk and they get meals for full seven days. So they've got two huge bags of food. They've got a big gallon of milk and we're doing that for 150 kids uh, in this location. And it's been a blessing to us. We know it's been a blessing to them. And it's just yet another way 
that we are working together to be the hands and feet of Christ in the river region. But we just don't want to see these big church-wide efforts. We want to see what you're doing in your neighborhood. And this week, we are celebrating the Ingram family. You remember a couple of weeks ago, we put out a call for letters of encouragement, and these guys stepped up in a huge way. You know, it's important for us to be the hands and feet of Christ during this time. And St. James is working hard to make a difference wherever we can. And you can make a difference right now where you are. Our church is bigger than our four walls. And in this time, let's show the love of Jesus to everyone around us. Send us how you're doing by clicking on the link in the description. Thanks again for tuning in. As always, please help us out by liking and subscribing to the video. It's right down below uh, in the link in the description. Thank you so much. And as always, keep those hands clean, River Region.